are you doing here? What are you doing here? Why are you here? This is the question God asked Elijah. But maybe we need to ask it right now. What are you doing here? Turn to your neighbor. Tell them what you're doing here. Come on, you can talk to each other. Some of us are here out of sheer habit. Trust me, my dad made sure that I went to church every week. It became habit, and it feels odd if I miss a Sunday. Some of us are here because we're supposed to be here. We either have volunteered to do something, we've done something that has put us in a role of responsibility here, and we're fulfilling that responsibility. Some of us have come hungering for God, And Bishop Holston asked the difficult question of how many of us are coming to church to be transformed. Are we coming to have our lives taken off the track we're on and put on, be put on God's path for us? Are we coming to be led outside of our comfort zones to do things God is asking us to do? Sometimes we don't want to come and be transformed because that means change. And we know how well people like change. But that's what God's grace is all about. God's grace encounters us where we are but does not leave us the way we were. It changes us. Now sometimes we think we need a great mountaintop experience for that to happen. It's going to have to be something that touches my heart, my head. I'm just going to have to be totally wrapped up in the experience in order for it to change me. Well, if that was the case with Elijah, he should have been totally transformed. Because what happens before we get to this point with Elijah matters Elijah starts out calling for the rains to stop until people turn back to God. And when he calls for the rains to stop, he ends up being sent to the widow of Zarephath who is hunting for sticks to make a fire to cook the last of her food. Elijah promises her that it will not run out if she will feed him. And so she does. She makes a cake for him first. And her oil and her flour do not run out. If that wasn't enough to convince him that he was in the midst of God's work with him, what happens in chapter 18 should have gotten his attention. In chapter 18, we find Elijah in a battle with the prophets of Baal. Now, this battle was a war of words. Uh, Think of two players on the ball field taunting each other. Now, Elijah could trash talk with the best of them. He, He had everything set up. The prophets of Baal built an altar. He built an altar. The prophets of Baal put their offering on it and he called down and they tried to call down fire to consume their offering. Elijah on the other hand waited and laughed at them. He asked if Baal was asleep or if he'd left the room. Where is your God? And they danced all the harder. Elijah's turn came and he had them pour water, not once but twice, 
until the ditches that he had dug around the altar filled with water. And then he prayed to God, and fire rained down and consumed his whole offering. That sounds like a pretty high mountaintop experience to me. Elijah should be getting it. He kills the prophets of Baal. And the next thing he knows, he's been sent to talk to Ahab because Ahab has followed the the gods of Baal. He's listened to his wife Jezebel. But Ahab gets back and tells Jezebel what happened and she threatens Elijah's life. And rather than standing firm in hope and confidence and trust in God, Elijah heads out to the desert. He's ready to give up, to just sit under the broom tree and die. Today is the last day some ministers in the United Methodist Church will be in the church they've been serving. They will begin at a new church next week. They're going to be asking themselves, what am I doing here? What is God calling me to do in this place? Please keep them in your prayers. Keep their congregations in your prayers. What am I doing here? Sometimes we ask that fascinated by where we are, excited about the possibilities. Other times it is clear we're asking that question because we really don't want to be where we are. Elijah did not want to be where he was. He did not want his life threatened by Jezebel. But what really drove Elijah was he had picked up the victim mentality that he alone and only him had survived. And now they wanted to kill him too. He was convinced that he was all alone. Being alone is not a good place to find ourselves on the path. It makes it hard for us to hear God at times. It makes it hard for us to be motivated to take the next step. Elijah had poured himself out. He was empty. We've heard of people being burned out. Elijah was there. He had poured everything out. There was nothing left. But when we have fully emptied ourselves, that's when we need to be filled, when we need to be renewed. This spring, I went away for a week, and I was truly the only person using the camp, a Lutheran camp. I was the only one there. I was truly alone in many senses. I had the opportunity to sit on the boat dock and it'd be so quiet that I could listen to the waves in the large pond lap against the shore. It was quiet. But I was not alone. I went on this journey with the encouragement of friends, with the prayers of others, I truly was not alone, and I learned that being by myself. Now, I did not want to go. There were times that I asked myself, what was I doing there? I went kicking and screaming, but it was a wonderful week. Elijah is at that same point. He's empty, and he needs to be filled, and God provides Elijah with the nourishment he needs to get to Horeb. Elijah, tired as he may be, as close to totally giving up as he may be, gets up and goes. He climbs the mountain, tucks himself in a cave, and waits. I wonder if he thought, what am I doing here? This is what happened to Moses. He was hidden in the cleft of the rocks when God passed by and Moses was never to be the same again. He was literally radiant. 
People could not look at him. He's just been told God's going to pass him by. Did he wonder what God had in mind? What are you doing here? What are you doing here? Are you here to encounter the living God in others and in the word? Are you here to find those people that will walk alongside you when you feel alone? Are you here to find those people who are going to pray for you when you are empty? Are you here to hear God call you into ministry beyond our doors? What are you doing here? What are you doing here? This is where we encounter the body of Christ. Where we can come to be renewed, strengthened, and sent forth. Not to be alone, but to go as the body of Christ, connected to one another and connected to a risen Savior. Are you ready to be here? Are you ready for God to transform your life? We have a couple of folks who are here because they're getting ready to go to Salkahatchee. They may have times this week, this, the week of the 4th of July, in which they wonder, what on earth am I doing here? It's 100 degrees and I'm on the roof. A lot of people would wonder what they were doing there at that point. Yet because of their commitment, they keep going back. And they keep finding God on a hot roof in the midst of deep poverty. We need to go to those places that make us ask, what are we doing here? and discover that God is there with us.